Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and Ross Richard and I are to be found today right in the heart of the picture postcard Cotswold villages in a famous place called Borton on the Water. Referred to slightly irritatingly in the guidebooks as the Venice of the Cotswolds, it seems it's the fate of anywhere with a bit of a waterway and some bridges to be referred to in such a way. However, there is some justification about this one because this waterway you see behind me is man-made. It's an extension of the Windrush River built in order to power some woolen mills um, in ancient times. It is incredibly beautiful. We're here, of course, very early in the morning um, in order to avoid the crowds. In this great summer of 2018, probably one of history's greatest summers, uh, the crowds here, of course, are enormous. We're avoiding them by being here early. It is incredibly pretty and we're going to show you around. Follow me. The name Borton is derived from a Saxon word for a fort. There's been a settlement here since the Stone Age, but it was the Romans whose road the Foss Way passes the western side of the village who settled here in numbers. During the Civil War in the 17th century, the area was staunchly royalist and the king, Charles I, paid several visits. In June 1644, on his way to Evesham, he and his son, the Prince of Wales, stayed in the manor house while his army camped on what is now the playing fields of the Cotswold School. Within two years, however, the final battle of the war was lost in Stow on the Wold, four miles down the Foss Way, and Charles's fate was sealed. In 1660, on the restoration of the monarchy, Thomas Temple, who had been rector of Borton when Charles I was here, was made Bishop of Bristol by Charles II in recognition of his support for his father. One of the main attractions in Borton is its miniature village. Built from 1936 to 1940, it's a perfect reproduction of the village of the time at a scale of one in nine. It was constructed by builders rather than model makers, which explains the extraordinary detail of the buildings. The walls are constructed of locally quarried limestone and the roofs are made of miniature Cotswold stone slates. Only the occasional shop sign and window has been altered since to reflect the changes in the village itself. Borton's growth is largely down to good communications with its neighbours. It had no market in the Middle Ages because it belonged at the time to the Evesham Abbey which also owned a market at Stowe in the World, which was closer to the centre of the Abbey's estates. Most of the buildings in Borton are 17th century, suggesting that before then there were few stone houses. They were almost certainly built of wood. The first alehouse was recorded in the mid-16th century, when the rector of Wick Risington nearby was accused of spending all his time there. But by 1939, there were six inns and pubs in the village. These days, tourism is of course a major part of life here. And it's those beautiful low bridges over the mill stream running through the centre of the village that draw people from all over the world. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around Bolton on the Water. It isn't by accident this place is so famous and so very much visited by tourists from all around the world. If you haven't already done so, press the subscribe button uh, so that we keep you up to date with all the films we make. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook, of course, and our website is thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. We'll see you in the near future.